Okay, here we're going to talk about the construction of the, uh, our optimal risky portfolios. What we're given here is we have, you know, in general, N assets. Uh, each of these assets I've, uh, you know, has a point here. Uh, this is expected return and standard deviation. So what we have is N assets, and then we have for each asset uh, an expected return and a uh, variance-covariance matrix between, the, you know, between all of these assets. Uh, variance-covariance matrix has to be positive, definite. Um, so, and I, we'll talk a little bit later about where you get these, but the idea of within Markowitz is just we know them. So just assume for now that we know them. Um, then what we can do, and this is something very easy to do in the Excel solver, um, and, and of course in other software. But what we want to do is we vary the weights uh, um, we, on these assets such that uh, so in Solver, what we do is we'd say set the expected return, let's say this is 10%, right? So uh, we say set the expected return equal to 10% and then vary the weights such that the standard deviation of the portfolio is minimized. And that gives us this point right here. Uh, and we just do that for 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then that's what gives us this curve here. Now, the idea here is that... One, only the top half of this curve is relevant. The idea being, I, so what we could do is, we, of course, we can invest anywhere here. And we, we would want to invest anywhere here rather than somewhere over here because for the same expected return, it gives us a, a lower risk. Also, if this is our minimum variance portfolio here, we would only invest somewhere on the upper half here. Of course, we could invest on the bottom half, but if given these two points here, you know, drawing the line down here, I would always invest here and never here because I have the same risk, but here I get higher expected return. So once we've done this, we, we, we can look at this part and say this is our efficient frontier. We would invest anywhere on there. Now the question is, how do we decide? Um, well, one, before I go into that, one thing to, to, to make sure is uh, the way we got this efficient frontier, again, is just by looking at the, the we're, we're given the expected returns in the variance covariance matrix. Also, keep in mind, I say you vary the weights to make this a minimum. So in other words, I set this, you know, equal to 10%, I vary the weights and find whatever set of weights gives me uh, the, the, the lowest risk, the lowest standard deviation, and that's, you know, that's my efficient frontier at every point. Keep in mind, you may have constraints on uh, the weights. So in other words, if you are allowed to short, uh, then you will have a slightly better efficient frontier, meaning, you know, and by when I say better efficient frontier, I specifically mean for every level expected return, you have lower risk, right? So for the same expected return, you have lower risk. Uh, however, if you're not allowed to short, you know, any sort of constraint you put on here will tend to make your efficient frontier worse. Uh, you may have um, constraints, uh, very common constraints that you would put on your weights is something that, you know, I can't have any one stock uh, take up too much of my portfolio. Uh, common is you know, not allowed to short and so forth. Uh, but the idea here is if two people have the same set of uh, inputs, expected returns, uh, variance covariance matrix, and uh, constraints, same set of constraints on the weights, they will get the same, and they have the same set of assets, of course, they will get the same uh, efficient frontier. Uh, that's an important point. Now what we can consider here is, all right, so let's say, you know, we have these inputs, we get the efficient frontier. Uh, the other uh, piece of information that's useful is uh, the risk-free rate. So in other words, if I add, and again, the risk-free rate is uh, the same for everyone, I can add a risk-free rate. And if I add a risk-free rate, what I can do is invest anywhere on this line right here that, that, that by varying my proportion that I invest in the risk-free security and in this risky portfolio, I can invest anywhere on this line. Of course, the idea here is I would, I would prefer to invest on this line, right? Because, again, for every, expected, you know, for, for every uh, level of risk, I have a higher uh, expected return. Of course, this means you know, I want to make this uh, the slope of this line. Um, and the slope of this line is going to be the sharp ratio. So the idea of the slope of this line is the sharp ratio. Uh, again, the sharp ratio being uh, the expected return on a, you know, a risky portfolio minus risk-free divided by the standard deviation of the risky portfolio. That's the slope of this line, or whatever you know, whatever risky portfolio we put in here. We want this to the slope to be the highest. Now, the, the notice the slope is highest right right where it's tangent with the efficient frontier. So, redrawing this a little bit better, so so it's clear, we have an efficient frontier, we have this risk-free security, 
and our optimal portfolio is going to be where uh, this is tangent to the efficient frontier. Now the question is, how would we find this? Well, again, um, using something like Excel Solver, all we have to do is say, change the weights, um, subject to the constraint that the, all the weights sum to one, the, some weights can be negative, but the weights sum to one, um, change the weights such that we maximize our sharp ratio, and we, so we can find that directly and we can find that easily. But the idea here is once we have this efficient frontier and we have the risk-free security, then I know that's my optimal risky portfolio. That's where I'm going to invest. Uh, and again, this is the same. Everyone who has the same set of inputs, the same set of constraints, uh, will invest in that same optimal risky portfolio. This is why Markowitz mean variance optimization was groundbreaking. The idea here is it allows for the segmentation of, of the creation of optimal risky portfolios to professional portfolio managers. So the idea here is, I don't, as a, let's say I'm, I'm just, a, you know, I'm a dentist, right? Uh, I just, uh, I have a professional portfolio manager figure out what the optimal risky portfolio is. And then, given my level of risk aversion, I decide where to invest on this line. It's not to say that I'm going to invest on, on our line here, on our capital allocation line, uh, right at that point. But the idea here is this is, the highest capital allocation line I can get. Uh, so what I'm going to do is invest some fraction of the risk-free security, some fraction in this optimal risky portfolio, uh, and this is going to be dependent on my risk. But the idea here is the only thing for me, the dentist, to figure out is where on this line I want to invest given my risk. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm more risk-averse, I'll invest maybe here. If I'm uh, less risk averse, I'll invest here, maybe even out here on the line, meaning um, I'm going to borrow at the, uh, at the risk free rate. Again, it might be king, but um, the, the idea here is uh, the more risk I want to take, you know, the more I'm going to be pushed off um, uh, on the, you know, along the capital allocation line in that direction. So, again, um, when we construct these, and, and you're, you know, this is the next thing you're going to do, uh, very easy to find this. And then, again, where you actually you know, invest on this line is that's up to you. That's up to your uh, degree of risk aversion. Now, so this is, you know, this is the theory. Once you implement this in practice, the big thing that you have to figure out, other than the constraints on your weights, is where are you, what... Um, uh, you know, what expected returns and what, uh, what are your inputs going to be for expected returns in the variance covariance matrix. Again, in the construction of this theory, it's just assumed you know them. Uh, in the next chapter, when we talk about index models, that'll give us a way, a better way to come up with covariances. Uh, the idea that, that, you know, the problem with this is if you have n securities, of course you need n expected returns, and then in terms of covariances, you're going to need n squared minus n divided by 2 um, expected returns. So, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, um, n squared minus n divided by 2 covariances. So you, you have a lot of parameters you're estimating. Uh, you, often people will use historical data. It doesn't make too much sense to use historical data simply because, and we're going to test this, but uh, you can estimate a covariance, but there's a range. It's, you know, it's only an estimate of a covariance. So if you move that covariance around in sort of a confidence interval, you'll, you'll see that it'll change the output you know, uh, by a great deal. The, the only one of the problems in implementing Markowitz is the ultimate, you know, this, when we say this portfolio, this is just a set of weights. So in other words, the set of weights in this portfolio is really um, affected by the input uh, covariances and expected returns. You change those covariances a little bit, you can get a, you know, a fairly large change in the weights. So the idea here is um, using historical data, uh, you know, from a theoretical standpoint, it doesn't make too much sense. However, the benefit of using historical data is, you, is you're going to get a, if you just, you know, look at historical returns and calculate a variance covariance matrix, you're going to get a positive definite uh, variance covariance matrix. If you just try to think of what the covariances are and maybe um, <clears throat> change them yourself, uh, you, there's nothing to guarantee that it'll be positive, um, definite, and then you can't invert it and you can't find a solution here. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, what we should probably, you know, about how you're going to come up with your, with your inputs. But uh, um, keep in mind, once we switch to implementing this, that's one of the sort of the weakest points of Markowitz. 
But that said, very easy to implement. And, they, and again, I can't stress the groundbreaking idea here is um, that this is the same for everyone that has the same inputs. If you have different inputs, you'll have a different optimal risky portfolio. But this does not, this optimal risky portfolio does not depend on your degree of risk aversion. So it can be, uh, we, can, we can pay professional managers to come up with these optimal risky portfolios, which separates the decision for the investor to, to only be uh, where on this capital allocation line do I invest. Excellent.